Welcome to Scroll in episode 88. I'm Ket. Joining me as always, Davia Starjumper. How's it going, man? It's going good. Glad to hear it. You a Halloween guy, Davius? Um, I dabble. I dabble. <laughs> you know. I don't get the impression you like get all psyched about Here's Halloween. Here's the thing. Back in back in the day, back a young me, all out on the costume. Like competition, I want to win, like all the way. Okay. On the topic of Halloween, the Witches Festival is here. It's going on right now. It's this game's sort of a equivalent of a Halloween festival. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so it's going on right now until uh, Wednesday, November 2nd. It's like a week away. Um, so this is primarily an XP event. You can get a, a special memento that gives you double XP, and that'll stack with any other XP bonuses you have, like scrolls and all that sort of stuff. Uh, how's your MagDK coming along, Davius? Just, you know, right, just right <laughs> down the path, you know, the runway, it is, he's there, and, uh, you know, he's... Just any second now, he's going to start I mean, you farming just, those you mobs. just wait. It's one of these days, it's going to just, it's going to happen. You got a week left. Uh, you can also get these plunder skulls. Uh, that's what I kind of like about this event, is I'm always just kind of running around the zones, killing random stuff, and if I come up on a world boss, I'll, I'll kill it. Uh, so I'm just kind of getting these plunder skulls because that's how you get them is just by killing bosses. And then there's uh, just random rewards and those things kind of like, you know, these event coffers that we always get. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things you can get in those skulls are these witches festival writs. Uh, shout out to mother of dragons. She hooked me up with uh, several of these witches writs that I was missing. Thank you, mother of dragons. Uh, but I got the hat. Looks pretty sick. It's on my mag blade right now. I like it. Saw the picture. It does look great. <laughs> it actually suits him uh, surprisingly just, well. Yeah, just works perfectly. Yeah, yeah. anyway, so which is special. We got another week. Main thing is that it's that XP. If you got any characters you're wanting to level up or any skill lines you need to get leveled up or anything like that, uh, I always hold on to my 150% XP scrolls and wait for an event like this to roll around and then just. You leveling uh, up a new character? Huh? No, no, I'm not. That's the problem with that's the problem now when you've been playing as long as I have, you know. Uh, I mean, you have every character. You'd have to pull kind of like what I yeah. do. You'd have to go with like a third Templar. Or... Yes, yeah, ex- and now with the armory system and all that, it's hard to even justify any of that. Uh, so yeah, like I already have thirteen characters. They're all fully leveled. There's maybe a skill line or two here and there that I could get for one or two of them, but. You know, for the most part, I'm there. So these XP events mean very little to me anymore. I don't think that, I don't think, I'll say this. I'll say the announcement. I don't think Ket is making another character until there's a new class. That's going to be the new one. New class or maybe a one. new race. If they make a new race, I might do that. I feel like you would just um, change one of your existing characters potentially to that race. Possibly so. That's possibly true. Yeah, I mean, what what can you do? I mean, with 13 characters. It's what, a lot. It's a lot of characters. What else? Yeah, like what else do I need? Like any build I want to make, I can make with any of them. You, here's what you do. You make two new characters, round out to a solid 15. Make one dedicated werewolf, one dedicated vampire. There you go. Done and done. You may have a point about the werewolf, but see, the werewolf doesn't even need to be on a de- dedicated character as a thing, though. You know, like that can be on anyone because you can always just turn that off and not true. be a werewolf. The only thing I will say is that it is kind of nice to have a character dedicated to werewolf because if you build, if you actually put all the armor sets in the build for the werewolf, you know, it, you don't have to necessarily make the other character make it work. That's true. That's true. It's just kind of all already ready to go all the time. One of these days, I'm going to talk you into it. You're going to be like, you know what, Davies? I'm sick and tired of this. Just shut up. I leveled a werewolf. What's funny is... um. Actually, a long time ago, and it's still I still have it. But uh, my my main old Betsy, my Stamplar, actually has a werewolf bite. She Ooh. got it randomly, uh-huh. like it's been years ago. But I I never have it have cured it. It's just I can I have to I think you have to do the quest or or something to actually activate it or whatever you know. But uh, she does have the bite. She could do it anytime. I'm calling it now. The title of episode two seventy five. Kit. Cat has been whittled down and, and has made a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> I've been defeated. <laughs> I got sick and tired of Davies saying it. Fine, Davies, you've won. Uh, hey, you get your DK leveled up first, your mag DK leveled first, then we'll talk. Oof. By, by episode <laughs> 275, at least give me 300. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, anyway, let's get onto this juicy public test server uh, <laughs> situation oh here. Yeah, here we go. So last week was the final week of um, the public test server. It was week five. Um, not juicy at all, actually. I'll just read this opening sort of paragraph. They say, PTS version 8.2.4 is the final PTS before Firesong launches on November 1st and contains more fixes for quests and content in Firesong along with a few other smaller fixes. Um, and that basically does sum it up. I mean, if you read through <laughs> the patch it. notes, it's just, that's it's what it is. Uh, nothing really of interest, nothing that you are likely to even notice at all. So nothing to really get into. So this is kind of a dead week. There's always this kind of dead week between the final week of PTS. Um, and then Tuesday, I think the day after Halloween, November 1st, okay. uh, that's when it's going to go live on, uh, on PC. Then probably two weeks later console, right? Yeah. I think it's usually two week delay. So, uh, the big day is here. Fire song. It's, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've been super hyped <laughs> about it. <laughs> Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. yeah. What do you think? Davis, you ready to get your hands on that new Druid King card deck? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a day. That's a day one may stay up till midnight the day of, you know, just to, <laughs> just to get ready for it. That was a perfect. Oh yeah. That was so funny. Very convincing. Oh, that was so funny. Uh, it's a big time. Well, what are you looking forward to this? There's got to be something you're looking forward to this patch. What, what do you got? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, uh, I consider myself a positive person, so I'm going to be positive and, and, but this one, it took me longer than it should have to find this, to figure out mm -hmm. like, what am I most excited about? I, it honestly, this is kind of a cop out answer. It's probably just the fact that there's a new zone. Like I'm excited to go see a new zone, do a okay. couple of quests, that but if if I if I you know really want to be more specific, I'd probably say the specific thing I'm most excited for is the Stormweavers Cavort. Um, oh, the that mythic that makes your magicka stamina. Yeah, the mythic that yeah. that swaps your you know, you know your sprint and everything costs magicka. I actually probably I don't plan to use it, but I am excited to see what people do with it. I feel like that's kind of a yeah. right up my alley of wackiness. Like, what is what are people going to do with that for a build? There's there's something there, maybe. That's definitely one of my things, too, that I'm looking forward to seeing that thing in action. I am going to farm it and try to make a build with it. I don't know if it'll actually be something that's worth using in the end, but we've got to try it. It's just too neat. You know, there's a thing about it that we kind of forget that, not not that it's huge, but it does have a passive 300 magicka recovery that it gives along with it, and mm -hmm. you know, that's not nothing. Yeah, that's like... Uh, that's like that thing's version of, you know, like stamina abilities all cost 15% less than the Magicka versions yeah. beca because of the fact that stamina is used for blocking and all that. So I think that's like a to, way to of weigh giving that. Out. that. Okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. Uh, but yeah, still nice 300 is a very good amount. And that'll scale with, you know, any percentage increases and stuff. Yeah. Um. I think the thing I'm looking forward to the most is this new target markers system. I think that thing's going to be pretty cool. You know, they, I don't think it's going to be just like, you know, the most revolutionary thing ever, but I do think it's just going to silently be this really handy little thing. I was just thinking I was playing a battleground just yesterday and I had a certain teammate that I was wanting to focus and follow. I was playing on a healer uh, and it'd be nice if I could just put a little icon over their head to make it just a little bit easier to be aware of where that specific teammate is all the time. Yeah. Because you can see the marker like through, I'm guessing, like terrain and objects, right? Well, I think at the very least, you can always see where it's at in your compass. So you at least know yeah. the direction you need to go uh, to get to them. Makes sense. Yeah, I, that, I'm that's going to be if pretty they're, cool. If they're behind line of sight, I'm guessing you would not be able to see it. But I really, I'm really not sure. But I think that'll be a neat thing. It's just a small little handy quality of life thing that I think I'll actually end up using quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, my my second choice, if I got a second choice, would be your choice, though. The Stormweavers Cavort. I think that thing's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, not the most exciting patch. But I think there's more planned. I'm wondering, like, what Q1 uh, of this next year is going to look like. I think it's going to be big. We had such a turbulent patch, last patch. And this one, by comparison, is like meek you know it's like they're, they're like they're afraid to do too much to yeah. make people even more upset but um i know they did say that they had more plans than what they were doing at that time so 
maybe we'll get some more of that with with Q1 this next year. Yeah. Have you uh, logged into PTS to look at the like at the new zone, see what the style of it is? Um, I have not. I, I have not. I have not, not even, either. I don't know if I've logged into PTS at all for this for this round. I don't think there's anything I've been wanting to really check out. Somebody really. didn't check out the Druid King deck. <laughs> 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 yeah i'm slipping <laughs> yeah but i guess it will be neat to check out you know the q4 zones often are you know pretty cool um, so i am looking forward to that as well anyway we've been doing a lot of battlegrounds um shout out to uncle sam mother of dragons king nar munchie and maddie We've all just kind of been grouping up in various configurations and stuff over the last couple of weeks, doing some solos, duos, trios, four squads, you know, just different things, doing a lot of battlegrounds. It's been a lot of fun. Last night, we had a really good squad. It was, uh, Davis, you were on a, on your execute sort. Uh, yep. Our buddy Uncle Sam was on his uh, his main, his Stam Crow Brawler, really awesome build. Uh, King Nar was on a DK Brawler, also a really awesome build. Uh, and then I, w- I was on my Magicka Warden Oaken Soul Healer, which I haven't really played with very much, but uh, uh, I was actually really pleased with it. We were kind of unstoppable. I don't think we went up against any like really tough teams. Um, it seemed like the ones we did go up against were, you know, they didn't put up the the biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we seemed pretty unstoppable. We wanted to. We were talking about we want to put that group up against some stronger teams because it seemed like a really good comp with the. The two bruisers, uh, a good healer keeping them alive, and then the the executioner securing those kills. It was a tight unit. It was operating as intended. It really was. It really was. I was really happy with how Lola, my Magden, was doing. It's really fun. Being a Ukin Soul healer is really cool with just, you know, you kind of have these blinders on where you can just focus on healing and, and not anything else. You don't have to worry about your buffs or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I was enjoying that, but yeah, that was a really fun group. Um, we had our second battlegrounds weekend event. We had the chaos ball weekend. That was, I think two weekends ago. Oh boy. Uh, that was an interesting experience. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Uh, one standout moment was this, um, you and I, Davis, we were doing some duo cues and we Mm -hmm. went up against this four squad. I think three times in a row we went up Mm -hmm. against this team. They were all four just straight up PVE tanks. And I mean, like when I say PVE tank, I don't mean like a literal PVE build, but I just mean their only purpose is to hold the block button and not Absolutely. die. That's yeah. that's all they were doing. And they, they, they were not attacking us. Like there was multiple times in each match that we would just stop our attacks and just look at them and just, they would just hold their block and just stare at us. They were not doing any attacks back us. And we were just laying into them and just, might as well have just been hitting a wall. Yeah, that was the bewildering moment to me. Because, yeah, we, we could not kill them. Absolutely, they could not die. Uh, and, yeah, there were moments, there was one particular moment where we just completely stopped attacking for a really long time, and they absolutely were just standing there. And all they wanted to do was grab the ball, hold the block button until the timer ran out. Yeah. And they won every time. I yeah. mean, they were unbeatable. Yeah. Uh, it gives me concerns about... Um, the weekend events. Um, the I, I feel like the relic weekend wasn't my favorite because the the you know there was some good matches, but there were also people that built builds for that, and matches would be over in three minutes, <laughs> and so yeah. it was not great waiting fifteen minutes for a queue and the match lasts three minutes and it's over. But I felt like this one was even worse than that one because like, I mean. Th- the, the the match we just described, but I mean, what's the intention there? I mean, I even for the people that are wanting to play Chaos Ball and they're building builds for the strategy weekend and the dedicated weekend, like what if there was three teams of those people? If we couldn't kill them, then there's no way they're going to kill each other and not even attack it. Like, is it just first one to the ball wins and then match over? I just, I don't know. I, I have some concerns with the weekends going through all of the different types of gameplay it, it uh this is gonna sound really biased and and i apologize for it but 
It just more makes me think that the thematic weekends should just be deathmatch weekends. It just the yeah. other the other ones don't work when when people focus their builds for specifically the other type of of matches with the other rules and the objectives. People just I don't know the game's not balanced for that. I mean that that chaos ball team was a perfect example of the game's not balanced if you make an entire build where you're not even going to lay an attack on somebody, you can be completely unkillable and it just, it just doesn't work. I kind of, in a way, I mean, I, I did not enjoy that match or those matches at all, but I, I did sort of appreciate it as an example for any, like, I wish I'd been recording that so I could show it to people. Like anytime someone wants me to be serious about the objective, I would love to show them that and be like, this is what being serious about the objective looks like. You know, it's just holding the block button until the timer runs out. And that's how you win. And it's not just chaos ball. That's the winning strategy for every mode, but deathmatch. Yeah. Uh, Even, um, even capture the relic, you know, you think of capture the relic as being, you know, like you want to have a speedy build for that. It's actually the tanky builds that do best at capture the relic because they're so tanky. You can't kill them and they'll just keep trying to take the relic over and over and over and over like a thousand times, you know, and you, you're trying to kill them. You keep interrupting them, but eventually they're going to get it, you know, and then once they have it, you can't take it from them. They'll just slowly, casually walk back to their base and dunk the relic. And those are, that's actually the best strategy for that. Of course, capping flags, Yeah, just stand there and hold the block button. That's going to be the best strategy there. Um, it's literally everything but deathmatch. If, if we want to really be serious about, uh, about the objectives, that's what it is. And honestly, you go into BGs right now, the the random only queue. It's a very tanky meta. There's a lot of things that make it easy to be tanky, and people are incentivized to to take advantage of those things because they're hardly ever doing deathmatch, and that's the only time they that yeah. being tanky isn't really useful. Grizzicon's asking, how does one even build that tanky in PvP? I've tried and get insta gibbed anyway. Uh, I'm actually not sure. I've never tried. I think it's just a lot of uh, immovable pots, probably, you know, heavy armor sets, and then just maxing health. Like, don't even... And make sure your sustain's up with a strong heal. Have sword and shield. And and, I, and even going further into it is that I, I do think even in, in not even the focused weekends, you know, even in matches that we do where we, queue, you know, we'll team up or do duo queues, and most BGs nowadays, there's this kind of like split, like part of the player base understands, all right, we're going to be in here in PVP. And then there's always a part of the player base that's just going and doing the objectives. And it's almost kind of like there's like two separate groups in BGs nowadays, where it's like yeah, some definitely. people are running around doing the objectives and then some other people are just going and enjoying the fights. And I don't know, it um, it's interesting. It's an interesting BG environment. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I've been playing a ton of Battlegrounds the last couple of weeks, especially. I mean, I'm always doing a bunch of Battlegrounds, but I've I've actually ramped it up quite a bit lately. Um, And it's the same thing. Like, I've I've kind of been playing with this same group of people a lot here lately, and we're, we're always all saying the same thing. Like, man, nobody dies. Nobody ever dies. Um, I know we've been saying that for a little while, but man, it's just so true. And that's going to be even more true with this next patch with Wardens being... Um, buff so much and everything um wardens are still definitely on top um and that's that's going to continue to be the case the the frost damage the cc the immobilizations everything everywhere is just too much man we've been here before like way like around the merkmeyer patch i think was when was the last time like the pvp community was like fed up with the cc situation it was something you you see people talk about all the time and they eventually addressed it and made it way better. <laughs> um, we've kind of come full circle and it's, it's back to being a problem again. And I haven't actually seen a ton of people be up in arms about it, but I think this next patch is probably going to be the tipping point. Cause it's already just like, like I would say uh, like anti snare abilities, like uh forward momentum or race against time or Falcon swiftness, the warden ability mm-hmm. or uh shuffle. One of those kind of abilities completely mandatory right now. Yeah, you have to have it. My Stamplar, I've always just used, I've relied on the Cleansing Circle as my Snare Removal. You know, that's always been good enough. Uh, not the case anymore. You actually need dedicated Snare Removal uh, to deal with all the roots and immobilizations all the time. The, the Cleanse alone isn't enough. I'll be, I'll just be immobilized immediately again. Yeah, just immediately goes right back on you. Yeah. 
And there's supposed to be, I, I could have sworn there's supposed to be a three second cooldown on immobilizations, but that has not been. I'll be I'll be immobilized, I'll dodge out of it, immediately immobilized again. Yeah. So that that's cooldown if there is one is not working right now. Yeah, I just I mean, I just go back to I think the prop I mean, we've talked about this, but I think the problem is is that there's just in in the majority of, of BG matches, there's not a reward. There's not a, a reward scoreboard wise for dealing damage or getting kills like the majority of matches mm -hmm. you're in kills are meaningless and damage is meaningless i mean think of how many objective modes there are compared to oh, death match is the only one that actually rewards damage and kills all the other ones it it does nothing for you and i just think that 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 is the problem that you know most people if if they're going to go into bgs and do the, and, and really focus these objectives they don't need damage they just need tankiness yeah, and it like incentivizes builds in such a way. Like I won't say any names, but there are players that like in the past you'd go into a battleground, you'd see their name, and you just knew it was about to be a slaughter fest. This dude, mm -hmm. the, you know, certain players you just know they're unstoppable. They're going to get like thirty kills every time. Those same players right now aren't even trying to kill people. They're just making super tanky wardens and just seeing how long they can not die. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. that's it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. So, not very fun. I hope we push past this. I know we we at least have another patch of this minimum. You know, sure. yep. probably another six months or so. But uh, we'll ride it out. You know, we're still managing to have some fun. Uh, like those pre mades we had last night. I mean, we yeah. I think you did get almost thirty kills <laughs> one match or something like that. We we got some kills. We've been getting some kills in in certain matches for sure. Yeah, like I put up a YouTube video of my Stam Sork. He got like 28 kills in, in a match, and it happens. It does happen, but uh, just kind of the, the general experience, that's that's not really how it's been going. Any other Battleground observations, Davius? No, I mean, I, obviously this is kind of a given, but I will say it is that the, the random deathmatch when it does pop up is just so much so more, hype it's so much more <laughs> enjoyment and there's just yeah. so much more strategy and it just the whole match it's just a whole different feeling and it just uh it makes me miss deathmatch because they are kind of a uh, few and far between but when you get one they are pretty great i swear you get them fewer than like statistically you should yeah. i swear <laughs> yeah i feel like that i'll get you know Three relic matches, three chaos ball matches, five you know flag game matches, and then one death match, and then just repeat that pattern. You mean land grab game? Land grab. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> flag, relic, land grab, ban. You know all the things. The the ones with the flags are not flag games, Davis. Duh. Gets me every time. <laughs> um. Well. I asked if you'd made some observations. I've been observing that, you know, despite the tanky meta, the last couple of weeks, a lot more people have been dying because I've been playing with my stamina sorcerer, <laughs> Tain, and he's been the one causing them to die. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, kind of, you know, we talk about nobody ever dies. Uh, there is a very strong exception. If Tain's in the match, someone's going to die. At least a handful of Deaths people are, are going to die. going to happen. Um. Talked about him a little bit on the last episode. He's been in great shape for a long time. Uh, his build has been updated since then. Um, so the build that I've been using for the longest time is uh, Briarheart as a front bar set, Wretched Vitality as a back bar set with a bow, uh, Gaze of Sithis Mythic Helm, and three Agility on the Jewelry. Um, so I was talking about on the last episode, I was maybe potentially looking for an alternative to Briarheart. Uh, because I was wanting to run more light armor pieces because this dude, like, uh, he, he's a great build, but the one thing he just kind of slightly struggles with is Magicka Recovery. Um, so if I can run more light armor pieces, that'll help me out with the Magicka Recovery. Stamina Sustain is not an issue at all, and I can always trade Magicka for Stamina if I want to with Dark Deal, right? So that was the idea. I didn't really, couldn't really think of anything at the time, but... Uh, Shortly after we ended our recording uh, of the last episode, Davius, you tossed out a handful of uh, sets that um, that you were suggesting that might might fit the bill. And one of those sets was the Scathing Mage set, uh, which is not a set I have thought of in a very long time. I forgot this set even existed. 
I actually have used it in, in the distant past. It was a great PVE set for a Magblade, and I did use it back then. But man, that's that was another life back then. <laughs> that's I mean, it's part of my favorite thing of you using this now is that it's just you know it's a it's like a throwback. It's nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a great set, but it, it's actually my favorite kind of set where it's like super duper powerful, but only for the right build. You can't yes, just slap this on any absolutely. old build. Uh, and it just so happens this is this is the right build for it. So uh, Scathing Mage is a light armor set. It comes from the Imperial City Prison Dungeon. Uh, when you deal the five piece, when you deal direct damage, it has a twenty percent chance to give you five hundred sixteen weapon and spell damage for five seconds, and then it has a five second cooldown. So um, that twenty percent chance from direct damage—that's the thing that's kind of the turnoff about it. Like five sixteen weapon and spell damage—that's a ton. That's huge. Whole bunch. Uh, but 20% proc chance from only from direct damage, you know, so, so a dot's not going to do it or anything like that. So there's definitely going to be some downtime, but the thing is, so a uh, 20% chance, another way of saying that is a, a one in five chance, right? So uh, my stam Sork is using rapid strikes for his spammable. So that's four direct damage attacks is what that does. So if you do a light attack weave into that, that's five direct damage attacks. So there's your one in five chance. One of those hits almost certainly, uh, is going to proc this set. My experience, it's very reliable. It's all it's it's to the point I've golded this set all the way out, right? I'm totally convinced. Like this is an amazing set for this build, um, and it's actually been just an all around upgrade. It actually has balanced my sustain out in a, in a in a more comfortable way, so the build feels a little bit better all around. It's a little bit more damage than what I had before, uh, so just all around, it's just a better build. So thanks, Davius. Thanks for the suggestion. Man. I never and would have thought of Scathing Mage. <laughs> I love that it's, like I said, I love that it's this old school, you know, not not highly used kind of people have forgotten about set. That's always more fun for a build. And it's working because Tane is, he's a killing. Oh, man, it's working so, so well. Just it's mowing it's through matches. But yeah, consider that set if you're using, I mean, uh, Rapid Strikes is actually one of, if not the strongest spammable in the game. A lot of people are using it right now. Uh, and so for anyone using that uh, as their spammable, Scathing Mage is a, a great option if you want to use light armor. So uh, so yeah, now it's a it's a five light, one medium, one heavy setup, uh, four divines, three well fitted. Um Oh, well, I guess I'll just kind of say what the actual updated build is. So it's it's Scathing Mage as a front bar set using dual maces, Wretched Vitality on the back bar with a bow, Gaze of Sithis Mythic Helm, and three agility on the jewelry. So basically the same build, just Briar Heart has been replaced with Scathing Mage, uh, and now it's five light, one medium, one heavy, instead of the three light, three medium that I had before, which was the whole point. Um... Jewelry is all infused with weapon damage glyphs. It's all gold except the jewelry, all the armor, and of course the weapons are all gold. Because uh, I'm I'm very committed to this build. I think this is just it, man. And I can tell you, dude, I've just been having so much fun with this dude. Like I've been maining this guy for two weeks straight. Just cannot get enough. <laughs> um. Anyway, sixty-four points, all points in stamina. He's an orc, serpent moon to stone, sugar skulls for the food, tristat potions. Uh, his combo is really simple. It's just Haunting Curse, Endless Fury, and Rapid Strikes until they get into Execute range. Then do a Spin to Win, uh, and you're trying to time that Spin to Win so uh, so that it hits uh, simultaneously with Endless Fury. So it's that double Execute that's kind of the, the gimmick of the build. And uh, it actually comes in handy more often than you might think. Um, it's nice to have like the Spin to Win for like an immediate, like maybe there's a couple of low health targets right in front of you. You can just kind of take them out both right away. And then if there's someone far away that has a low health bar, you can snatch them too with your Endless Fury. Like even when you're not using them all together in a combo, it's just nice to have those tools for any given situation. Because uh, BGs, man, a lot of the time it's just about stealing kills, especially as a Sork, that's your job. You're, you're making sure your team's getting those kills. Um, so no shame in it, that's your job, steal them. Uh, the biggest weakness is healing. Uh, sorks in general, especially Stam Sorks, have a really, really hard time healing. Um, so, um, anyone who's thinking about making a Stam Sork, um, thinking it sounds so awesome because you're hearing us talk about it, it is awesome, but you super duper have to rely on the strength of the class, which is mobility. Yeah. Um, you got to use that movement, line of sight, streak, streak your heart out. Um, you can't really tank out anything. If your health bar is missing any health at all, get out of there, heal up and go for it again. That's what you got to do. I know you've said this on past episodes, but really, 
with your specific play style and, and, you know, based on what you just said, like your specific play style, stamp sorks really are just, they're built for you. The mo you're mm -hmm. just, you, you are a mobility player. You are, you're fantastic with that mobility and you, you get in the driver's seat attain and it is uh, it's a sight to watch. It's fun. It is. It's very like an exhilarating play style. Like it gets the, it gets the blood pumping. That's for sure. My favorite is when we're when we're doing duo cues and you start you get that kill count going. You've got that new add on, so it's, you know once mm -hmm. you start getting a kill count, just wave goodbye to to old Tane because he's gonna just start rolling. He the, he, he doesn't he see the team anymore. Lust. Yeah, he just sees he's there's blood in the water. He's just rolling through the match. Yeah, yeah. You really I mean when you get in the zone with this kind of stamp sort build, it really is fun. And I yeah, you, I, you're kind of right. You it's like once you get a few kills. It's like there's a mental aspect to it where you it just makes you better somehow. You just keep you just keep getting kills after that. Um pretty fun. Um so I'll say goodbye to Briar Hart. This is that's this set's been on my Stam Sork for years. I swore I'd never take it off of him because it's the perfect Stam Sork set. It still is a great Stam Sork set. Um I'll I'm, I'll definitely keep it in the bank. I have a bunch of gold pieces with tri-stat glyphs and good traits and all that stuff. I'm sure it'll find its way onto a build at some point, but uh, for now, we'll say goodbye, Briarheart. You've been a good set. This is a big day. You said it would never happen. It's happening. It's happening. It's for um, real. So I would almost, not quite, but I would almost say that this is the best Stamsork build out there. I the only thing stopping me from saying that is there's there is one other stamp sort that I come across on a regular basis that completely shuts me down. And I just I stand no chance against this this player. Uh I won't say their name. I didn't ask for permission. If I say uh, uh a, a stamp sort bash build in Battlegrounds on uh, on PCNA, I'm sure anyone who does a lot of Battlegrounds knows precisely who I'm talking about. <laughs> um Man, unreal. That's the best stamp sort build. Okay, it's actually a bash build. Uh, this person is unstoppable. I've never seen them not get a gazillion kills a match. They cannot be killed. They never drop block. Um, I can't do anything to them. We've talked about bash builds before. There's a lot of really strong advantages to, to specking into bash, but they also have some weaknesses. But basically, being a sorcerer nullifies those weaknesses. Uh, pretty much overcomes all of them. It's just an unstoppable build that shuts me down every time. I have no interest in playing a bash build, and to me, that's not really like thematically fitting for a stam sort. So doesn't make sense. <laughs> if you want to play a thematically fitting build, then I do think Tane's build here is probably the best you can do for that. Yeah. Uh, but if you want the, actually just the objectively best stam sort build, it's probably a bash sort that's using sword and shield and like the dead dead lens demolisher set. I think it is. Mm. That's a puncher. Not sure what else? It's good, man. Like seriously, when I see that name in a BG, I strongly consider just dropping out. <laughs> it's like, man, this is not going to be fun. That's seriously the only, the one and only person I ever see that I'm like threatened by these days. Because we talked about in the last episode, damage is really low. Like no one's really doing yeah. a ton of damage. Uh, that one player is. I try to steer clear anytime I, I see them. So, so you said you said goodbye, Briarheart, and you said it'll probably find its way. You don't you don't have a plan of of who to throw that on yet. No, not really. Now it's just kind of like you know sometimes I'll just get in the mood like I haven't played this character in a while. What can I throw on them? Oh, here's Briarheart. That'll work for now. You know, it'll probably end up being something like that. I've always thought Briarheart would work well on a Stampler. Yeah, I've considered it for a standpoint. It would have to replace Deadly Strikes, and I plugged that into the build editor, and tooltips-wise, it is not as good. It's less interesting. Uh, it's less, but I had that same thought. Probably both of those together would be pretty good, but that's, that means I'd have to give up Wretched and, you know. <laughs> that doesn't exist in Cat's World. <laughs> <laughs> but last word on my Sork, I just want to say that it's just really cool that my stam sork is in such like impeccable shape. And at the same time, my mag sork is kind of at the top of his game too. So like my sorks are just sorted out. Yeah. They're just set. They're they're on the character select screen. I can log on with either one of them anytime and just have a rocking time. It's pretty cool. Happy. That, that actually hasn't been the case in a while. Tane, Tane right now seems like the character that's like, when you, you want to get serious, you've had a couple B, you know, if a BG has gone bad a couple times and you're like, all right, you're grabbing Tane. That's he's going to be the 
the one that, that tips the scales. That has happened a few times because there's been a few times that I have logged in with some different characters just to change it up. And then like, I'll miss a kill or something like that. I'm like, that's it. I'm getting back on with Tane. <laughs> it's Tane time. <laughs> yeah. Enough of this nonsense. Uh, speaking of sorcerers, Davius, what's going on with the Thane of Pain? Oh, boy. So, well, you know, if we talk about Tane, this is going to be a new rule. If we talk about Tane, we got to talk about Thane of Pain. These, you know, these. these yeah. These are the Dana Bash Pain brothers. Thane of Pain and Tane, you know. The the 80s cop show. <laughs> yeah. They're buddy cops. That's right. Um, so, you know, I talked about this build a little bit when we when we recorded the last episode. It was very, very new, and I had kind of tested it out and it worked well, but I'd only had it kind of going for a couple of days. And uh yeah, well, let me start out. First, I you know, I gotta give a shout out to Uncle Sam. Uh, you know, our, our, our friend of the cast, Uncle Sam, and then kind of a shout out to you following up with that. Cause really what this build is, is that really just ideas from that Sam build. And then you kind of put your spin on that build. And then really all this is, is me kind of putting my spin on that build. So it's just really kind of leapfrogged, uh, uh, down to me, but it's Uncle just kind of the official build consultant of the <laughs> scrolling podcast, official build consultant. Uh, and this build, I think, is Uncle Sam approved. You know, I haven't gotten the stamp yet, but I, I'm assuming. Um, but man, it uh, I have learned it is dangerous. It's a dangerous thing. Uh, me having a build uh, that gets gets these kind of kills. Uh, I have. Uh, I saw that look in your eye last night. I have, you know, I scary. I've dipped my toe. Uh, an addiction has been created. <laughs> uh, I should have avoided this. You know, I. I <laughs> One day I need to go back to the brawler support builds, but man, uh, this build is just complete carnage in yeah. uh, BGs right now. It is, uh, it's you know, it's just yeah. I get that look in my eye. It's that it's that same thing. You get that you get that blood in the water, and it's you know. Last night it was the Anakin Skywalker <laughs> versus the Youngling situation. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was just uh, yeah. It was there was some chasing down moments for sure. Um, I'll get to the build real quick before I kind of talk more about it. But the, uh, the build is just, um, the five piece Kavash gladiator, uh, five piece war maiden, uh, the Oaken soul ring for the mythic and then, uh, one piece magma incarnate. Mm-hmm. Um, and man, it, uh, it's, it's a very, you know, overall it's kind of a simple build, not a lot to it. You know, Oaken soul build keeps it simple. One bar. Uh, the actual bar I use is crystal frags. That's actually what I'm using for the spammable. Uh, Haunting Curse, uh, Mage's Wrath, Streak, and Vigor. And then I use Overload for the ult. And uh, uh, it's five five medium, one heavy, one light. Uh, the jewelry is all infused with spell damage glyphs. Um, and then the actual stats, I just do 32 points into Magicka, 32 points into Health. And then Sugar Skulls, we love Sugar Skulls and Tripods. Uh, and then the oh, yeah. Atronach, Mundus for Sustain. And it's uh it's working. Uh, the whole the offense is it's kind of a um, uh, an interesting because I have War Maiden, which is you know I'm dedicating an entire set to that, and that really only buffs Crystal Frags and Haunting Curse. But the way this build works is that Crystal Frags is the spammable, and I'm just making sure Curse is on who I'm fighting, and then it's just Crystal Frag and Light, you know, with Light Weaving, Light Attack Weaving. And mm-hmm. so that uh, War Maiden is buff- buffing both the Haunting Curse and the Crystal Frags. And then when the Crystal Frag procs and I get the free one, that combined with the Oaken Soul, the sustain on this build is fantastic. Um, it, it, I feel like I can streak for days, which is, for me, is what keeps me alive. Because, you know, as I mentioned, my only defense is streak and vigor. And so I do have to streak around quite a bit. Yeah, things, you're living on the edge with that. <laughs> <laughs> if things start going south, I do kind of have to streak out, make sure I'm mobile. But I mean, this build, this is one of those builds that you, like you just said, I have to be on the move and have to be careful because there's not a lot of defense. But I can already tell it's it's just made me better playing mobility wise. Like depending on that uh-huh. and that being the only defense I have, like I've noticed I've become so much more mobile in battlegrounds like i am constantly moving i'm always being trying to be aware of situations looking around yeah that's what i was about to say like situational awareness goes way up too yes because you're just always you know if a fight goes down on top of me like it's going to be bad news i don't have enough you know defense to get through it and so i just have to make sure that the fight never comes down on top of me yeah you got to avoid it in the first place yeah and uh yeah and it's 
it, I'm having so much fun with this build. Um, yeah, but you know, the, the, the haunting curse when that procs, uh, you know, that's with the, with the war maiden and the Kavach, once they get into execute, it's just, they just blow up. Uh, and then, you know, make sure you throw a mage's wrath on there so that when they do get into execute, it's going to pop and yeah, it's usually, sense. uh, it's usually curse mage's wrath and then spam your spamble is usually how it goes. Yep. That, that way that's if, when it does pop, that wrath is already on there. Yeah. It, I will say in, in with the tanky meta and BGs is that sometimes I will wait to throw the wrath on there. Like sometimes I'll start with the curse and then do a couple light tech weaves, wait till they get to about 75% health, then throw the mage's wrath on there to make sure Makes that sense. it'll pop at the right time. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, if somebody's super tanky, kick on the ult, get the overload, and that usually is enough to take them down. Um, but, man, it is, uh, it, like I said, it's a really simple build. Uh, you know, the Oaken Soul kind of makes it real simple, and in the, in the, the, the rotation is, you know, not a whole lot to it. But um, that Oaken Soul ring, just, it just fills in all the holes of the build that, that need to be filled in. And, as, you know, like I said, as long as you're mobile and playing smart and, and utilizing that streak and knowing Vigor as your only defense, um, the sustain feels really, really good. And really all you're doing is just focusing on damage and getting those kills. Like that's your main focus. You really don't have to worry about much, uh, much else. And, uh, man, I usually don't like to throw numbers cause I mean, I'll be honest. I, you know, I literally, I really play that brawler support. So I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a big kill guy in BGs. I really just kind of like brawling, you know, I'll look at like kind of damage numbers, make sure I'm doing that part you know, a sister, big part, but, uh, this, this, this character with these kills, it's, it's changing me. I've, For I've Sorks, the, that's how you measure success though. You know, like that's their job. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's true. Like the brawler support, you know, they're supposed to be taking hits and throwing the damage out. This really, the whole point to this build, the job is, is to finish off the characters and, and get the team kills. Uh, that being said, I have started this new, uh, you know, when you have a character with kills, I'm having some fun with it. And so I've started, uh, uh, keeping track of like my, my kill to death counts. Uh, okay. I'm only six BGs in, but in the last six BGs, I've got 114 kills and three deaths. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's getting a little Ooh. ridiculous. Um, yeah. but yeah, you know, you just get, you just see, you know, you get a score with that many kills and it just. Like you said, you get that you get that little twinkle in your eye. Yeah. Uh, so you know, <laughs> I, I've never, got a, we're never going to see Davius logged on with a healer again. People. I mean, what happened to me? I mean, my yeah, but d <laughs> the actual my character Davius doesn't even do damage in BGs. What is what is what has happened to me? One day, <laughs> one day, I'll log into Davius and I'll, I'll you know I'll I'll get this addiction taken care of. But for right now, I'm having a, a lot of fun with this character. I want to do a quick quick shout out to Mother of Dragons. She listened to the last episode and was inspired by your Oak and Soul Sork build and made, I think she like pretty much copied it, but then since then it's just kind of slowly been making it, twe making tweaks mm -hmm. to sort of make it her own, you know, but it's yep. still an Oak and Soul uh, bar, or Oak and Soul single bar build with Kavach Gladiator. Can't remember what else, you know, it, it has changed, but it's, it's kind of the, the essence of it is kind of the build you have here yeah. and it's been working pr really well for her as well. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the perfect part to this build. There's not, like I said, it's 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 pretty simple. There's a lot of moving parts to it, and so if um, you know, just it, it goes to your playstyle. If your playstyle kind of needs to make a tweak and throw, you know, kind of swap. I think the Warb Maiden is kind of the swappable set out. If you want to go, uh -huh. or you don't want to be so um, squishy or so dependent on streaking out of fights, you can swap that Warb Maiden out for maybe a little bit tankier set and maybe uh, hang into fights a little bit more, but. Or you could, uh, you laugh, I know, but you you could do wretched vitality and uh, <laughs> drop and drop the oak and soul. Wait a minute. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I think that builds no, out keep there. Keep oak <laughs> Keep oak and soul. I just keep. I do wretched vitality and switch your moon just to a damage moon. Just that's true too. That's yeah. a that's not a bad idea. And then that stamina will help you kind of be more agile. And yeah, stuff. yeah. The the sustain is extremely important on this build. The 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 feel the really good feel for sustain is. Uh, what makes most of the times that things go south, what lets me get out of the fight. Yeah, it's man, you got to have good sustain. That's always been uh, super important to me for all my builds. As long as I've been doing PVPs, like, it's got to be comfortable to play. I do yeah. not want to feel like I'm struggling to keep resources. Like if that's what I have to do to get kills, then I'm not interested in that build. You know, like <laughs> I want something that I can have fun with. 
it's you know we we kind of joke about when you're playing a character and you 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 know you're at that like perfect sustain level that's kind of where i'm at with this character is it's like the second the absolute second that i feel like my resources are gone i swear every time that i hit that second it's just when i can hit my tripod again it's like the exact yeah. moment where it's like oh and there's the pot like i'm good now it's i'm just good to right. go that's what I really like about this hybridization situation. The, the more we get into it, the more I actually really, really like it. Because it, it really does let you dial things in so, so nicely. Like with my stam sork I'm talking about here, he's so hybrid-y now, right? Like he's, mm-hmm. I'm calling him a stam sork, but he's, he's wearing five light armor and all that stuff. And I didn't approach this build thinking like, I want to make a hybrid. You know, that wasn't it at all. I'm just trying to make the best stamps work I can make with what's available to me. And it's just, this is where we've ended up. And I can get that sustain dialed in so perfectly perfect between Magicka and Stamina that, you know, I don't have to invest super heavily into either one. And it allows me to still have a lot of damage and the and the build feels comfortable to play at the same time. I think hybridization is a big part of that. Like you can just get everything dialed in just so, so mm-hmm. the way they kind of changed the armor passives a while back so that. You know, you can do three, four pieces, whatever. Um, I'm really having fun with that. And, you know, for a while I was thinking like, you know, we talked about before, like how, you know, is there ever going to be a such thing as a mag sork versus a stam sork? Or is there just a single sork that has the best of everything? I think I'm finding there is still a distinction. And I, yeah. I still have a mag sork and a stam sork. They are both sorcerers. They're both very much sorcerers. But they, they also have their own things going, too. And same thing for my Templars. They kind of have their own things going. And I think I've found that that, re- that, that divide is still there. There's definitely, uh, you know, I was just about to say, like you just said, your Stam Sork's in, in five light armor. And then my Sork, which, I mean, he's I, he's probably more Magicka-based is what I would say. Because, you know, four mm-hmm. of his five bar is Magicka and Vigors is only Stamina. But I'm over here talking about this more magicka based sork, and he's in five medium. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. you've got a stam sork that's you know up in the fight wearing five light, and then I've got this range sork that's you know running around in five medium uh, with seven divine. So it's kind of you know, there's definitely a lot of different ways to to kind of get your specific niche to make it fit, you know work how you like it. Yeah, yeah, I love how you can just you can just kind of tweak things just. Any little pressure point where there is, where you're feeling a little bit of uncomfortableness or whatever, you can probably do something about it without having to sacrifice too much. Yep. Um, cool, man. Thane of Pain and Tane. And they're a fun duo. We've, we've done it, and man, they, we don't have any support, but it's kind of funny is that really our support's just offense. You know, if, if we play these duo, you know, we call the duo, but we may see each other five times in the match because we're just yeah. we've both had the, the 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 blood haze has come over our eyes <laughs> and we're both just gone but uh they do work uh they they uh they just mainly compete to see who can get the most kills <laughs> and what's funny too is like i see a lot of conversations of people saying like sorks are in really bad shape and they're bottom of the barrel in pvp man i don't know i yeah. don't know if i believe that like and it's not low MMR. I mean, we're mm-hmm. we're in max MMR. I mean, I know you just kind of have to be- take our word on that, but take it take it from me. We're in a battlegrounds guild, you know. Like, uh, I think if you build your sorks right and you play yeah. them right, they're they can be pretty darn amazing. I don't think they're the bottom. I don't think they're necessarily the top like they used to be, but I still think they're very good. Yeah, I think if you build the sork right, I mean, this is I would say, and I think you would agree with Tane. Like this this sork is my that's my it's my best character right now. Uh, for BGs mm-hmm. for sure, and it's interesting because I've seen that kind of same thing. A lot of talk of how sorks are down; they're not really working right now, and it's like, well, why? They're working pretty well for me. <laughs> yeah, mine's my best character, so mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> me as well. Uh, so, yeah, make guys make a stam sork. If you don't have a stam sork, make a stam sork. Uh, we've said, I think I've said that exact sentence several <laughs> times on this on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, uh, but it's it's like the most fun you can have in the Elder Scrolls Online is a PvP stand sort. Um, so historically, anytime I spend a lot of time on my stamina sorcerer, I always uh, spend a fair amount of time on my stamina Templar Betsy as well. Uh, what's up, Gummy Bear? Stam sort is king. Yep, that's true. Gummy gets it. Gummy gets it. <laughs> 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 uh, so I always. 
I always play with my Stamplar kind of in tandem with my Stam Sort because in the past they've always sort of filled a similar niche. They have a similar play style. So if I'm in that mood, you know, it's kind of between one of the two. But um, that's kind of changing. I think the more we get into hybridization and the more the game evolves and the more I as a player evolve, they're kind of diverging a little bit. Like they still have a lot in common. They're both orcs. They have bow on the back bar. They're speedy, kitey type of builds. But they bring very different things to the table. And, you know, I was playing, I was just playing with my Stam Sort for like two or three weeks straight, just kind of maining that dude. And then when I decided, okay, it's time to jump on Bits, Betsy, the Stamplar, and, and see how she's holding up, uh, I was kind of discouraged at first, right? Because she, she doesn't hold a candle to the Stam Sort to Tain as far as um, offense goes. Yeah. Getting kills and just piling up a giant mountain of bodies. She, she can't do that. Not anymore. Right. Like yep. Templars are, that's not what they are anymore. Um, so that was bumming me out at first, but kind of, I've kind of been thinking about it quite a bit. And, you know, for a Stam Sork, that's all they bring to the table is that big pile of bodies, right? There's no support. There's, there's nothing but killing power. And so if that's all you're bringing to the table, then yeah, you better be really darn good at that. Right. Um, and mm. so you know, good for Tane. He is very good at that. So he can kind of justify his existence in that way. Uh, but Betsy doesn't have to just rely on that to justify her existence. Right. For one, she's like a lot more selfishly survivable. She can, she can actually brawl pretty well these days. Uh, and she has a lot of group support as well. She gets maybe like a third of the kills as Tane does. Uh, but she's also providing all this other stuff to the team as well. Um, and so, you know, if she was getting, the same kill counts as the Stam Sork, that wouldn't be right, right? If she could yeah. do that and have all the group support and all that, then everyone would play Stamplar in that case. Uh, but instead, everyone's playing Stam Sorks. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, everyone's playing Wardens. But, yeah, Wardens all around. Um, but um, that's kind of what I've been trying to keep in mind. So like the last few days, I've really been focusing on Betsy uh, and I've I've had to kind of get out of that Stam Sork mentality where I'm like chasing down kills and really focusing on that as my metric for success. You kind of have to get out of that. And uh, uh, our buddy Uncle Sam used the term um, battlefield commander. He he referred to Betsy as a battlefield commander as far as like how I play her. And I thought that was a very good description of kind of the mentality I try to get into uh, when I'm playing with her. By the way, anyone who's not aware, I'm a Stamplar main. This is my main character. This is, this is the favorite. You can say it. She's the favorite. Um, but that battlefield commander is definitely kind of the thing that I try to keep in mind where like, I'm not necessarily trying to be the best healer, not necessarily trying to be the, the one with the most damage per se. You know, I, I'm trying to just do whatever the team needs, period. Just what, what, like, from one moment to the next. What do we need to do to get through this thing and to be successful? What can Betsy do to help? And really, that is the strength of the Templar class, right? We've said lots of times before, they sort of exist in this offense and defense simultaneously all the time. Uh, and they're more than anyone, I think, are able to kind of adapt to a situation on a dime. Like in, in an instant, they can respond to something happening and, and make a difference in that situation. I think, I think they're better at that than anyone. Um, and so I'm trying to take advantage of that, you know, and what's really nice about Betsy is she's, she's very adaptable to any group or any, anyone that she's with. Like if you want to log in Davius with your Sork and go zip zapping around, you could team, you could team up with Betsy just fine. She can keep yep. up. She's very yep. quick and speedy. She can do the hit and run thing. She has support. So she'll be able to help keep you alive as well. It'll be a great pair. Uh, Absolutely. if you want to log on with your, uh, stamina dragon knight, Lord of Nords, that's also going to be a great pair, right? Because De Betsy, again, is going to have the support to help keep you alive. She can actually brawl pretty well these days because she has a lot of healing with the with the bubble and the cleanse and the, uh, what's it called, honor the dead and vigor. She's actually very survivable. Um, so she can get right in there and brawl as well. She's very adaptable to whoever she's with. She can, she can complement them in whatever way they need. And that, that's what I really like about uh about the stamplar in general yeah and i would even say playing with you and old betsy kind of that that battlefield commander i think that's a perfect description just because you know you're just talking about these sorks you know when you're on tain you're zipping around you're just you're just hunting the kills like that it's a it's a one 
you know, not to not to bash Tammy, yeah. but it's a one trick pony. But old Betsy is not going to zip around, and and it more like you said, it's that more Swiss Army knife. She can throw the team heels, but because of she is very speedy, but she does very much stick with the team. I think that goes into the battle, you know, kind of that commander as well, because I'll notice when we're teamed up with Betsy, there's so much more situational awareness. Like, you know, if we're about to, if we're in a bad spot, if we're about to get flanked, because you're moving around and you're looking around and kind of looking to the battlefield, throwing up heels on the team. You know, if you see somebody that needs to be taken down, you can usually call them out. Or if there's somebody that you're like, hey, somebody's low health over here. Like, it, that, that Battlefield Commander is just a, such a great description because old Betsy's always sticking with the team. She's throwing heals if the team needs it. She's, you know, laying in damage if that's kind of what the team needs uh, and really sticking to the team and really kind of having situational awareness for the whole team. Yeah, exactly. Like if I'm going to be the group leader, like I'm going to be, okay, Ket's the group leader. He's going to be calling the shots. I'm going to want to log in with Betsy because yeah. I know that she's going to have every tool for any situation if if she needs to scout ahead she's she's fast enough to kind of scout a situation or figure out like the positioning mm-hmm. that needs to happen Absolutely. if it's a dog pile brawl she can handle that as well uh she does 1v1 fights like i'm talking about like she doesn't get nearly the kills that my stam sort does nobody gets the kills my stam sort <laughs> yeah. does uh she's getting about average kill counts to what most people are getting in bgs these days like six seven eight kills a match you know she does not die she like straight up does not die. Like I, I would say maybe once every five matches, she'll die one time. Uh, super duper survivable. And that that's kind of a big strength I'm trying to lean into as well. Um, and you're right. Like she does, she can't streak away. Like kind of when you're playing as a Templar, one of your strengths and one of the things you're strongly incentivized to do is to provide that support, right? Because yeah. There is no streak. There is no invisibility. There's no dark deal to get your resources back. Like you, you're forced to play smart. There's no other choice. And if your if your teammate dies, that highly increases your chances of dying because you're outnumbered now and you Absolutely. can't just streak away. So your survival strategy is to keep your teammates alive. And that's you know you think about the theme of the Templar class. That's perfectly fitting. That's that's what yeah. they do. Even if you're an offensively focused build, I think that's a that's a strength of the class that you really do need to lean into and kind of measure your success in that way. So I'm still feeling pretty good about Betsy. Uh, Templars, especially Templ- uh, Stamplars, have been nerfed extremely heavily. Uh, they're getting nerfed again this next patch <laughs> with the with the backlash nerf. Yeah. Uh, which is a bummer. I've actually gotten some clutch kills with that recently that I'm like, man, that probably isn't going to happen after next week. Um. But I think that's fine. I think I can still kind of be keeping this in mind. That I was kind of thinking for a while, like, man, I've been having so much fun with the Stam Sork, and I don't know if I get on get on with my Stam Plar, if I'm even going to still be enjoying it. Am I gonna am I going to be a Stam Sork main now? Actually, <laughs> you know. But I get on with Betsy. I kind of took me a few matches to kind of slough off that Stam Sork mentality. You know what I mean? But once I kind of got my mind straight, it's like, oh no, what was I thinking? Betsy is. Betsy's the the goat, man. Absolutely. Um, you just kind of have to get your your head right. Is yeah. all. Do you think you're gonna drop the? Uh, I don't. I think the power lights the magic version of the ability. But do you think you'll actually? No, that's drop the stamina. The, oh, it is. Okay. Do you think yeah. you'll actually drop the power of the light bar and look for some other sort of? Um, I don't want to say execute, but uh, I have considered replacing it with the beam, but I don't know. I, I just that's really tough for Betsy though, just because that beam is just that's just not I feel like that's not, it's not her. really her style. Yeah. So do you she have would get a lot more kills though? You, <laughs> yeah, <did> that. <laughs> that is true. Do you have uh you have spin on the build, like the spin to win? No, uh, she uses two hander on the fr- front bar, so I could do executioner. And actually yeah. that's actually not a bad idea. I've always reasoned in the past that like why have an execute ability when my spammable does as much damage as an execute? Yeah. But that's not really the case anymore. So yeah. That's probably, that's what I was thinking is going with. I couldn't remember if you had the two handed or the dual wield, but I would think probably the weapon execute version might end up taking the place of power of the light. That's not a bad idea at all. Cause, uh, something I've noticed is I can, um, I can get people down low, like I can get them down into execute range, but finishing them off is the hard part because that's yeah. when they start panicking and yep. going full uh, defense and just getting through that last little bit of their health bar is tough. If I had an execute, that would probably help. 
So let me try that. And a, uh, uh, a Templar without power of the light. <laughs> it's, a, it's wild times, all right? We are. What we are, is, what is happening? Thunderdome. <laughs> We have lamented the Templar situation lots of times. I don't guess we have to get all into that <laughs> again, but uh, it, you know, I'm I'm still able to enjoy my Stamplar, and I'm happy for that. But it still is a sad situation. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Betsy, she's she's soldiering on. Don't worry about Betsy; she's just fine. Uh, did I say what her build is? I never even said what her build was. So <laughs> let's see. Let's do this build. Betsy's build is the same as the last time I talked to her, talked about her, but it's been a while. She's uh, it's wretched vitality as a back bar set with a bow, uh, deadly strikes as a double bar set. Vadish ran two hander, a two handed mace on the front bar, gaze of Sithis mythic helm and one piece magma incarnate. Kind of a lot going on there. We got a back bar five piece, mm-hmm. we have a double body five piece, an arena weapon, a mythic uh, helm, um, a one piece monster. Just a lot of stuff. But uh, I think if you're just kind of going for a stat-based classic stamina Templar, that's about as good as you can do right there. I've I've tried a lot of different setups. I mean, you could drop Wretched for maybe Dagon's Dominion or some other damage set. But yeah. if you're if you're like me and you're trying to kind of fill that um, support role when needed, Wretched is. Pretty that's much funny you say that. You just described that. my exact Stamplar build. It's it's basically exactly that except for I dropped Wretched for Dagon's Dominion. Dagon instead. Yeah. Yeah. If you just want max damage, that Deadly Strikes and Dagon would be a. That's what I, on on. my Stamplar, which my Stamplar does not get near the results that that Betsy does. (laughs) And I don't play with my Stamplar much nowadays, but I was mainly trying to get the jabs back up to uh, pre nerf numbers. And the the Dagons with the Deadly kind of was getting it pretty close to the numbers that it used to be. It could still, I mean, you know, we, we talk about jabs like. Like it's nothing, you know, but I mean, <laughs> it's, it's something. just compared, compared to what it used to be, you know, we're talking like jabs used to basically have a, a 20 K tooltip for, for my character is about a 20 K tooltip. If you combined all jabs together, now it's about a 15 K tooltip, still pretty darn strong, but the fact that it's AOE is kind of what, um, brings it down because, uh, most people have evasion in yeah. their builds. So you just kind of have to count on that damage being reduced by 20 percent um but anyway that's that's all kind of beside the point i mean i think that's a i mean i think that's a big point you kind of hinted on it but with the jabs you know when you laid into a character with your with a stamplar build and you kind of went through the rotation and got them down once they're in that execute range you would just kind of jab 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 just lay on the jabs to finish them off and that just doesn't work anymore. It absolutely is not the case of what you can do anymore. You have to almost find something else to do it. Yeah, that that last twenty percent of their health bar, you won't get through it for a for a decent player that has a good like defensive kit. Mm-hmm. You won't get through it without an execute. The thing is, yeah, like I think I would do the beam instead of executioner. Executioner gets dodged a lot. Guess what? Doesn't get get ever dodged. <laughs> not that beam. beam. My goodness, <laughs> cannot be dodged. And Betsy has really high weapon damage. So that thing will probably that's, be pretty that's, strong. That's, that's the other thing I'd say about BGs right now is that uh, sometimes you might think you're into a laser tag fight because, boy, you better believe. A lot of beams. Yeah, there's beams all over the place. You hit 49% yep. health, beam. Beam from both yep. sides. Just Hell, you hit 60% health, you get a beam. <laughs> the preemptive <laughs> beam. Like, oh, that, that person's got damage. Beam them up. There's some uh, beams. Sam's been playing with a beam plar. He recently put together a beam plar, oh and I, we were laughing because he's just been, he'll just put the beam on someone that has full health. He's like, oh, they'll probably take some damage eventually. <laughs> then, <laughs> then they'll, they'll, they'll die eventually. Well. It'll get him. Yeah. He was doing some nasty things with that, with that beam plar, too. Yeah. Beam plar's pretty fun. I mean, I made one. It is fun. It's just a shame to me. It's not the classic Templar, and that's the really fun Templar, the classic Templar. My interesting take on it is, is that they, they, Initially, I guess the, I don't know if they ever said this exactly, came out outright and said it, but initially it seemed like the idea for all these changes was is they went, okay, there's too many Templar jabs builds out there. What can we do to change it up? And so they made all these changes. And now what they did is all of these Templar jab builds just became Templar beam builds. <laughs> yeah. Like they just went from using one ability, like everybody used jabs to now everybody uses beam. Like, Templar still. And it seems like maybe that one build, but 
that might have been like the goal of you know Zoss is like they want to encourage people to try out this beam build. Yeah. So mission accomplished if that was the case. Yeah, I guess so. Um anyway, in other news, I did sell that soul shriven skin rune box, 2.3 mil. Just so loaded. Been making it rain. It's actually half gone already. Cats cats um, buying tripods for everyone. Tripods all around. I've literally spent I think <laughs> actually at this point over half of it. Oh, only gosh. the the only thing I've bought is tri stat potions. Oh man. That that that'll tell you your BG numbers. You know, you said you've done a lot lately. That right there will tell you just how many you've been in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. We're doing a lot. Uh, um it's been fun. I, I I wish it wasn't so tanky. I wish there wasn't so much crowd control. I think a lot of the fun I've been having is just uh, the people I've been playing with. I've been playing with some fun people yeah. here lately. We've got we've got a good group, group going with. Uh, we've got like we're in a good spot right now with with the Discord and the the podcast. We most of the times yeah you log into ESO, somebody in the Discord is going to be able to do some BGs with you. It's it's a great time right now. Yeah, the Discord's hopping. Scrolling podcast at gmail.com if you want to get in on the Discord action. Like it's it's kind of in that perfect sweet spot right now. I feel like where there's activity, there's always some stuff going on, but it's not just like blasting all the time. It's just like exactly where you want it to be. Everyone in there's super cool. Not a not a toxic soul in sight. Everyone's mm-hmm. just free and cool and funny and uh it's a good time. Yep. Um so we are at the emails and shout outs portion of the podcast, but I don't think we're near the end yet. I think we're we'll actually, <laughs> we got a streak a time here. This is officially a streak we got going here. I guess we technically did get an email last uh-huh. week from Grizzly uh-huh. with his, uh, with his shout out request. Yeah, so we got a, the streak streak is back. The two streak episode streak where we've received back. an email. We have received an email. So we're a real podcast this week. Uh, (laughs) This is from, I don't know if it's Bo or Bow, B-O-W-E. I'm going to say Bo. Sorry if it's Bow. (laughs) Could be Bowie Uh, or Bowie. Damn it, Davius. (laughs) (laughs) Really changed up. But don't trust me on pronunciation. Most of our listeners know that if whatever I go to is most likely, odds are it's the incorrect pronunciation. So Now I kind of want to say Bow. Anyway, (laughs) Bo Bao says, gentlemen, I'm finally caught up with all of the episodes and I'm looking forward to the next one. I'm a UK console player who mains a Magden. I'm very casual, but thanks to your podcast, lately I've been trying out PvP, particularly Battlegrounds, and it's been going better than expected. I'm considering making a stam sort for BGs after hearing both of you glow about them for 80 episodes. (laughs) So that's pretty awesome that you've like listened through the entire catalog of oh, our, pretty cool. our podcast here. Um, yeah. Make a stamp sword, dude. You heard us talk earlier. Make that stamp sword. Oh, don't, yeah. don't do not delay. Make it happen. Um, so bow has, uh, I guess it's bow now. Bow has, <laughs> says he has a few questions. If you'll humor me, <laughs> <laughs> just, just change it every time. Just don't even just, just change it every time without saying anything. Uh, question number one, Bao says, what warden build or builds do you expect will be in the meta next patch? Uh, what things might be best, pra- best practice to have in a warden build as a foundation? So, uh, number one, you want to, ha- you want to go out and get point blank snipe, right? Davius. Oh yeah. Your that's now that's going to be the go-to warden build. You get, you get your Nord, of course, obviously. Yeah. Nord, get you that point, point, point snipe. blank snipe. Uh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> neither of us really main wardens. We do have wardens, and the, but the ones that we have are super duper far off of the meta. So mm, yeah. you know, I'm not sure we're going to be super reliable. I'm pretty sure the master's frost staff is going to be in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, I'm probably most wardens, magicka and stamina, maybe even uh, are going to be using that master's frost staff. I'm, I'm imagining winterborn. It's very popular for wardens right now. I think that'll continue to be the case. Um, I think death dealers fet is a really good mythic item to look at for wardens. Uh, I would not do gaze of Sithis actually, as much as I love gaze of Sithis, uh, with, um, with all the buffs, uh, wardens get for frost staff and you're getting that sword yeah. and shield level of blocking passives. 
Uh, I think so. This is a, uh, is, is a no go uh, for wardens, mm-hmm. uh, but death dealers fit. I think would be a really good one, but beyond that, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, retro vitality is good on every build. I'm sure <laughs> that, that could be great. Um, but masters frost staff and a lot of CC spam. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the warden strategy right now. I think that will definitely continue to be the case with gripping shards or wall of frost, uh, Arctic blast, just locking everyone down all the time. Just, spreading your disease everywhere um that will probably be the way most wardens go um as for like a <laughs> grizzly sa- grizzly con says my build basically <laughs> <laughs> as far as a uh, foundation goes like essential skills to use for a warden uh you're definitely going to want your deep fissure that's your main burst attack and it gives you like 9k penetration against your target yeah. major and minor breach um, you want a spammable of some kind, it can really be your choice. I would say check out that cliff racer. It gives you 400 Oof, uh, weapon and nice, spell damage. It's a nice little buff there. Yep. Uh, Arctic blast, pretty much mandatory for all mm-hmm. wardens now. Uh, Falcon swiftness, the, the flappy wings that makes you run fast. Uh, I'd probably use the, the morph that gives you uh berserk minor berserk. Um, you want your armor buff. You probably want the niche. Class abilities. There you go. Just <laughs> warden. They yeah. got it all in the class abilities. Yeah. You know me. I, I you got to go wacky. I, I that the, what you just described <laughs> is probably the meta. But yeah. I I just reading this. I I won't do this because I I already have my my wacky warden build. But I've always wanted to do something like bleed damage wise with a warden. You know they have a lot of yeah. uh, bleed damage. So I always think something cool with like the blood drinker set. You know it's a plus twenty percent to your bleed damage. I don't know, throw Malakath on there. That could be thematic, you know, just, just spike yeah. it up. Maybe something like that. I don't know. You got, got to go wacky. Got to go wacky. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wonder what Stamdens will do, you know, like if they're just going to go ahead and equip a Frost Staff or if they will try to be yeah, more I guess. I guess with the wacky or... build I just said, with a Frost Staff, obviously, you know, get your Frost Staff of blood <laughs> Make drinker. it even wackier. <laughs> a, f- a Frost, you're going to freeze their blood. Yeah, there you go. Um. So yeah, not sure what the exact meta will be, but probably a lot of CC spam and Master's Frost staff will be part of it. Um, and you have like four flex spots there with what I just said. So you'll have mm-hmm. like, you know, you probably want one or two more damage abilities, probably another heal ability and whatever else you want. Question number two, uh, Bao says, what sort of builds would work best against a Warden Heavy meta? I had a thought uh, a Nord might be good for the, for the frost language. resistance. <laughs> uh, and probably a melee build so as to not feed them ult. Perhaps a Stam Sork. Uh, well, again, definitely make a Stam Sork regardless. Yep. Uh, <laughs> get that <laughs> message across. The, just go ahead and get that. Just knock that out anyway. Um, I would say a Stam Sork could be good if your combo is strong enough to burst them down very quickly. So that would go back to a couple of episodes ago where we said stack damage and get good. It would have to be a build like that where you have like no sustain, no defense. You just have all damage and you can burst them down in like one or two global cooldowns would be. That's the only way because otherwise if you can burst them down to 10% health, <laughs> that's not enough. They're going to heal back up and yeah. you're not going to be able to kill them, yeah. you know. Um. So that's the thing. Uh, any kind of, I would say, like a, as a Nightblade too, um, you're going to run into that issue. Nightblades have it hard because uh, half their combo gets deflected from the Shimmering Shield. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Stam Sork, if it's a really, really big damage build, uh, I would think like a Dot build would be really good. Like a Dragon Knight using um, Serpent's Disdain uh, and just a, maybe just a ton of penetration might be really good and just kind of play the long game, wear them down. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll actually just say this, the, the very best counter, uh, is to just walk away. It doesn't matter what build you're, you're using. Um, you know, what? I'm just laughing. Cause my answer, my answer to this was your last one. Like it's, you gotta have something that's fast and basically can just outrun them and just yeah. come back if they've taken damage from a group and, and, and have enough damage to finish them off. Here's the thing. Wardens are tanky. Even if they're not trying to be tanky, they are tanky. And we're always talking about like a, from a battlegrounds, like deathmatch specifically sort of perspective mm-hmm. in the, in the time that you waste trying to wear down a warden, you could have gotten five other kills. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
They're always slow. They almost never have a gap closer of any kind. You can just casually stroll away from them and that's it. You know, that's yeah. all you got to do. So that would be my advice. Yeah, especially if they're with their team. Like if you've got a warden that's with the rest of their team, like avoid that person. Like mm-hmm. try to get the rest of their team because they're they're going to make that entire team tank here as well as they're just going to keep... Ugh, gets bad. Yeah. So... um I would say just definitely have some sort of uh, snare removal in your build. So like race against time or Falcon swiftness or forward momentum or shuffle. There's probably some others uh, that's, you're going to need that to get away from any wardens because they have all that CC. That's really the, the one thing they have to kind of keep you in their in their zone. Uh, but if you have some sort of snare removal, you'll have no problem just, just walking away and just avoiding them. That's what, that would be my best advice. Uh, really doesn't matter what build you have. Um, question number three, Bao says, I have a hard time keeping track of all your characters. The scroll and lore is vast. <laughs> uh, could you each do a rundown of their names, specs, and classes, and in Ket's case, their races? So I thought we could have a little fun with this and, can, and play a game. I can say game. my character races too, if need be. <laughs> well, <laughs> we already know. You, you have all Nords, we know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought we could play a little game here. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'll name off um, my characters. Like I'll say Magblade Breton, and you'll tell me the name of that character, right? And so I'll just kind of go down my list. We'll see how many of my mine that you know their names of, uh, and then I'll do yours. I feel pretty good about this. I, I feel pretty, I think I know this. I know this scroll and lore pretty well. I'm kind of nervous. I think you'll probably you'll probably beat me, but we'll see. I think I got this. I'm ready. All right. Okay, so I'll go first. <clears throat> so, uh, Magic and Nightblade Breton. What's that? That's gonna name? be that's gonna be Ged Sparrowhawk himself. Ding ding sure. ding! That is correct. Bonus question: He's had two previous races. Can you name one or both of them? Uh, I can definitely name one. He he used to be a dark elf. I remember that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was uh, his original. Man, Ged. Uh, the other race that Ged would have been. This was he was originally a dark elf, and then he would have switched. Yeah. And then he switched to the Breton. Uh, mm, yep. Uh, he was an Argonian for a little uh, while. <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't have guessed that. I would not have guessed When I was that. first starting to get into PvP, and at that time, Argonians were the meta for PvP, basically for every build. Uh, not well, bad, Good though. one. Good, good yeah. guess, though. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. All right. Next one. Stamina Nightblade Khajiit. Absolutely know this one. This is Catface Johnson himself. Catface Johnson, the legend himself. The legend himself. Where it all started. Okay. Magic Templar Orc. Well, that's old Butch Mahoney. Butch Mahoney, indeed. Can you remember his previous race and name? Uh, I think previous race, he was Argonian? Nope. <sighs> oh, he was a Khajiit, and his name yep. used to be Jub Jub. Jub Jub, yep. Did a race and name change for him a little while ago. Here back. I go. I'm heating up now. I'm heating up. Here I go. <laughs> I kind of miss Jub Jub as much as we love Butch, which is Butch great. Is, yeah, but Jub Jub was great. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's a toughie. Stamina Templar, Orc. Ah, this old Betsy. <laughs> old Betsy, PvP main. Yep. Uh, what was her previous race? Remember that? Uh, old Betsy used to be, for sure, used to be an Argonian. Yep, she began as an Argonian, yep. changed her to an orc. I remember that one. You had a lot of Argonians uh, there for a little bit. Yeah, well, Argonians were the PvP meta for a while, for like every, literally every build a while back, like kind of pre-Somerset. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Magicka Sorcerer, Breton. So this one's a little tricky. I believe, unless you've done a name change, I believe the name is still Intergalactic. That's the name. Boom. That is the name. Here I go. Yep. I am. Uh, I'm on cruise control now. <laughs> that was one of the toughies. I felt like. Uh, okay, this one you'll get. Stamina sorcerer orc. Oh yeah, that's Tane. Crazy man. Spelled like Wayne, but with a T. Oh yeah, all caps. Uh, I wonder if you'll get the bonus on this one though. His previous race and name. <sighs> He's had a race and name change. So before he was an orc, I would. Hmm. I don't know this one. I do not know that one. I didn't think you would. That was that's been a while. 
That's okay. It's just a bonus, so no big deal. But he he used to be a red guard named Randy Nelson. Randy Nelson <laughs> and the red guard. I remember when you changed him to an orc. I remember uh-huh. that change. And I remember that the was name a good change. change. Yeah, well, that was definitely a good change. Randy Nelson was kind of Dolesville, honestly. But... Randy Nelson. Yeah. Okay. Magic of Dragon Knight, Breton. Uh, Misato. Uh, Misato. I think you have the last name on there too. Kitsurazi. Kitsurazi. Close enough. The judges will accept Katsuragi. Misato <laughs> Katsuragi. Katsuragi. There we go. There yeah. we go. <laughs> um, a lot of consonants okay. in that one. Stamina Dragon Knight, Orc. Oh, this is this is Bad Sally herself, the dirt biker. Yeah, Stamina Dragonite number two, Nord. Uh, my favorite, oh, Flossie herself. Flossie, okay, Magica Warden, Britain. Uh, so you know we always call her Lola, but I believe her actual name is Aunt Lola. So don't aunt forget, Lola. don't forget her title. She is an I, aunt. I'm, I'm considering changing her name to Irma Frost. Irma that Frost. We've discussed yeah. that. Yep. Uh, Stamina Warden Wood Elf. Oh, one of my favorite ones to say out loud. Old Hambone Malone himself. Hambone Malone loves big trees. Loves big trees. We got a whole backstory <laughs> to old Hambone Malone. Just really quick. He grew up in a rural, rural like <laughs> Wood Elf village. He never really strayed far from home. He finally made it to the big city oh, yeah. in Grotwood with that huge tree, and it just blew his mind. And now it's he won't shut up about That's it. That's all he talks about is that. And he'll just, like, anytime he'll just, like, meet someone new, he'll be like, hey, let me ask you something. What's the biggest tree you ever What's seen? What's the biggest tree you ever <laughs> saw? Because I'm about to blow your <laughs> mind. Oh, love Hambone. Love Hambone. Hambone's Hambone. good. Okay, uh, we got two more left. You're batting 100 so far. Magicka Necromancer, Argonian. That's Despair. Uh-huh, Great look. Uh-huh. I love Despair's look. One of my probably top three of, of looks you have on a character, Despair. She has a great look. She's very necromancery looking, and she's also very Argonian looking. And I love that you brought those two things together. Because like, if you look at mm-hmm. an Argonian, that, that's not an easy thing to do, I feel like, to make them very necromancy looking. But despair pulls it off. She pulls highly it off. recommend anybody if you're out there go go take a look at despair. She lives up to the name. Like she looks like she will cause you some despair. Yes. Um, stamina necromancer wood elf. This is old Bobby Bobango. Robert Bobango Jr. Sometimes goes by <laughs> Robert. I actually have I have that. You know, during the day he goes by Robert yeah. Bobango, but at night yeah. you know he just he goes by Bobby. Yeah, Bobby Bobango. That's right. You got them all. There we go. That's not too bad. I feel like the only one I missed was the previous names. Pretty good. You got a tall I'm order not, here. You got a tall order to hit it. And I don't even have as many that I have to remember as, as you did. <laughs> you don't have as many characters. So here we go. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read them off and then you can go. All right. So Magplar, number one. That is Davis Starjumper, your pure healer. That's the original himself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Magplar number two. That is the Bard of Sovngarde. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. Doing good Great. so far. One of the best names of all your the characters. The Bard of Sovngarde. Uh, then we're going to follow that one up with the Stamplar. Probably your best name, the Need for Mead. <laughs> the Need for Mead. I, I would say that is probably... Your favorite name of my characters. It's just such a perfect name. So perfect. From a speedy, roly-poly Stamplar, need for Mm -hmm. me. Uh, My Sork. You know, he doesn't have a label of a Mag Sork or a Stam Sork. He's just going by Sork. It's your only sorcerer, right? That's true. The only one. So his name is the Thane of Pain. What was his? You changed his name. Oh, if you could get the original, the, the previous name, that would be... That would be that would be tough. That'd be very tough. I can give you a hint. Give me a hint. He used to be. He used to be it in that bear. Bear, bear yeah, part tooth. Of the bear. bear tooth. That's right. Bear tooth. The Nord. Bear tooth. The Nord. He had. Yeah. He had the bear clan going on. The bear clan going on. Wow. That was bear, that a great memory there. Bear claw's the only one left. Is that right? Yeah. He's the only one. Everybody else died off. You know. You know how it goes out oh. there. The bear clan. They live with bears for goodness' sake. Uh, next one, <laughs> next one is my, uh, my only night blade. Uh, Prince Charming himself, gift of the rift. The gift of the rift. Yep. Mm-hmm. My werewolf He's you know, yeah. mainly what he is more werewolf than night blade. 
Uh, next one is Magicka Dragon Knight. It's the one you don't have leveled up. Okay, hold on. It's gonna be. It's gonna be good. If you. This is gonna be your toughest one, I think. If you can get this one. Oh God, I knew it. What is it? See, this is one you haven't leveled up with. You haven't really played with it. <laughs> I so do not like, log on with this one very often at all. But you have seen his look. I, okay, I know. It's the bald skald. The bald skald. That is him. Wow. That was a close one. That was close. That was close. But you I, think, I think I'm just coasting from here there on There you out. go. There you go. <laughs> uh, next one is Stamina Dragon Knight. Uh, that is the Lord of Nords. Lord of Nords himself. Probably my favorite character. Never been in a low MMR match in his life. Never. Doesn't know <laughs> what it is to have low MMR. I would say Lord of Nords and, and my main Davius, that's very much for me. That's my, that's my Ged and old Betsy. Davius yeah. is the Ged. Lord of Nords is my old Betsy. That's my, yeah. that's my go-to. Cool that um, we have those analogs like that. <laughs> we could compare. Uh, next one is Stamina Warden. Bear Claw, the Nord, Bow Bear Brawler. The, the man himself who doesn't know actually how to work a bow and arrow, but he sure <laughs> wields one. Yeah. He'll stab you with it right up close. Mm -hmm. uh, next one is Magicka Necromancer. The Never Ending Nord. Never Ending Nord. That's actually my he, probably my favorite name of characters. The Never Ending Nord. He has Nord. no end. That is a very, it's a, it's a very like flowy sounding name. Yeah. That's actually like probably it. the Never Ending Nord, my Magicka Necromancer, is probably the next build that I will be overhauling. Probably the next oh, one. Oh, okay. Keep an eye That's out for that, ideas. people. Uh, and then the last one, Stamina Necromancer. Stamina Necromancer, he is the chief of grief. The grief chief. <laughs> the grief chief. <laughs> the chief of grief. So this is, this is actually going to be pretty amazing. That is correct. but. Recently, wow. I actually changed his name. What? But, well, so you actually knew about the name change, but just even more recently, oh. I changed his name back to the Chief of Grief. Do you know the name that I just changed it from? Did I know about that name change? You did. But I changed the name because it, it didn't work as a name. That's why I changed it back to Chief of Grief. Love Chief of Grief. And I changed it back to this because did the last one the didn't work, I thought, as a name. But it is a great title. Uh, I don't remember. I do think, remember you saying it. Think like 90s commercial. Yeah. Nord or nothing. It's, it's Nord, Nord or, or nothing. nothing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But I did change back to Chief of Grief because as much as I love It's Nord or Nothing, I didn't think it worked as a name. So. That's true. Like, hey, I'm going to go to It's Nord yeah. or Nothing's house. Let me hop on It's Nord or Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's just more of a title for all the characters. Or it's like, Nord what would be your nothing. short? What would be your shorthand for that character? I'm going to jump on nothing. Yeah, I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump on nothing. So, yeah, you're right. what has now happened is that It's Nord or Nothing is just the hashtag for all Davius characters. That okay. Yeah, Davia Star Jumper. It's Nord or nothing. It's Nord or nothing. <laughs> uh, you got it, hundred percent. All right. I'll go ahead and give you credit for guessing the races. Well. Yeah, I feel like we we know the characters. We know them well. Okay. If you've forgotten, we're making our way through an email here from Bao. Question number four. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, question number four. I'm really enjoying the Witches Festival, but my favorite is the New Life event. Uh, aside from the PvP event, what is your favorite event? Davis, what do you think? I'm actually going to agree with Bao here. I really kind of like the New Life event. But let's be honest, I'm a little biased. The New Life event really kind of takes place in East March. Aha. Uh -huh. And so go. I'm a there little, you know, I'm a little biased towards that one. It takes place right outside the guild hall, right under the tent. New Life Festival. That's 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 the good one. That's a pretty good time, and it's like around like Christmas, New Year's, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. so it's like the tis the season sort of vibes and stuff. That is a good time. I don't really participate in events. Honestly, I don't really get excited about any events. When you sent this uh, email in, and I actually googled like eso events and like looked at a list of all of them and like not a single one 
honestly, do I get excited about except the PvP event? But you said we can't pick that one, so <laughs> I mean that uh, that one is hands down our favorite. Old old White Strikes Mayhem, or the better name, formerly known as Mid Year Mayhem. Mid Mid Year Mayhem. But I think if I had to pick one, probably the Witches Festival, the one we're in right now, just because it's easy to participate in, like. I just kind of run around randomly and kill random stuff, including mm-hmm. world bosses. And so I'm just doing what I always do, and I get those plunder skulls from that. Um, so it's just kind of easy to participate in. So I guess for that reason, because <laughs> I'm lazy. That's your pick. <laughs> um, it's like, that's that's my pick. This, I don't really get into events. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, I'm just not into it. Yeah. I, this question actually got me thinking. I really hadn't thought about this before, but in other games I've seen where other games will do events, and I kind of wish... They would bring this idea to ESO where during these events, you kind of had special event uh, bosses or world bosses to where yeah. it was just just that world boss showed up in like a couple different zones. Like maybe you have like three or four world bosses that show up just during that event and they drop kind of special uh, gear. I think that'd be really cool if they adapted that into ESO, just some kind of special unique bosses. I think it would attract a lot of attention. I think that'd be kind of a neat little change. I think you're right. Like there needs to be something like the events. There's always like certain rewards that they offer and that's the, the incentive to participate in the event. Yeah. But the actual activity that you're doing is not fun. Yeah. It's ever, usually just you know? running. You're just running from yeah. one place to the other. I want to actually do some sort of, that's why I think the boss would be cool. If you had some sort of challenge, some really tough world boss that it maybe took like, you know, to take it down, it was kind of like a, you know, like a dragon world boss. You got to have 20, 30 other people there to take this boss down and you can get like some special prize. Maybe it'll, you know, it's got like a long spawn time so that everybody's kind of waiting for it. I don't know. I just think that'd be yeah. kind of cool. And it would kind of bring everybody to one spot for the event other than just the kind of the quest giver that they you to run from one person to the next. Yeah. Gummy Bear says maybe every area could spawn a roaming world boss. Yeah, like something like that. Yeah, that would be really cool. I like that idea. And it could be like a story that they could have some story element woven into it. Absolutely. Let me, you know, I'll fight a giant pumpkin. Bring it. (laughs) (laughs) Ten sugar skulls. The word, the reward for everything needs to be tri-stat potions. Uh, (laughs) I wouldn't mind ten sugar skulls, though. That ain't too bad. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad. It would not be bad. That Columbine. Give me some transmutes, and I would be talking. So, yeah, that's the last question. Bao says, cheers. Uh, P.S., he says, shout out to whoever is in your Discord listening to you record. So that would be Grizzly Khan and Gummy Bear. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Bo Bao, for the really great email. Uh, we did get another email from Crimson Knight. A one twofer. of our longtime listeners. We've got a twofer. She asked, what do I do if I don't have a PC to play ESO with right now? That's a toughie, Crimson. Uh, That's a toughie. (laughs) That's a toughie. I think, uh, I guess, I don't know. uh, You can't do Stadia anymore. They they shut that down. Uh, You just got to get yourself a PC. You got to get a PC. I will say this. ESO, you really don't have to have the best PC in the world to run ESO. You can run it with a pretty low spec PC. So just, you know, grab any old PC you can find. Get ESO on there. Lower those settings. Honestly, like literally any modern computer with a dedicated graphics card, uh, mm-hmm. like the cheapest thing you can find with a dedicated graphics card will do the job just fine. Yep. It'll handle, you, you might have to put it on medium settings, but I can tell you the game looks pretty good still in medium settings. Yep. Um, but otherwise, if that's not an option, um, you know, of course, uh, Crimson, you're already in our Discord, so you know very well, but... Uh, you can hang out in the Discord and talk to us about um, ESO and builds and stuff like that and kind of get your fix that way. And we're always like, you know, when we play Battlegrounds and stuff, we're often streaming what we're doing and stuff. So you can mm-hmm. watch that. Um, you know, there's a, there's the UESP build editor. Honestly, I spend maybe almost as much time on that as I do in the actual game. Like the fun part is making builds, you know, and you can kind of get a lot of that enjoyment just from the UESP build editor and yeah. piecing builds, builds together that way. Uh, while you're kind of biding your time until you can get a PC, you you kind of do a lot of theory crafting and kind of be ready to start putting builds together as soon as you do get your PC. Um, so that's a, that's the way to do it. If you're trying to get your ESO fix, any other suggestions, Davius? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, between the Discord and the build editor, I, I would agree. I think you, you, those two things, you can do a lot of planning. And, and uh, one thing that I will say I like to do is, and this is kind of how I, this is kind of how the wackiness starts, is that sometimes when I'm just kind of scrolling through ESO and maybe I don't, like I'm not in a, a point where I can log in and, and do some BGs, just scroll the um, scroll the set list. You know, look up heavy armor sets, light armor sets, medium armor sets. Just kind of scroll through that list until you kind of find one, and that's really how a lot of my wacky ideas for builds start. Is that I'll scroll across one that you know the game's kind of forgotten, and then just kind of start snowballing from there. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I like to do too is just uh, go to the official forums, just Google search ESO official forums, and just read what people are saying there, uh, just to kind of keep a, a pulse on things you know uh, you kind of have an understanding of what's going on in the meta so you kind of have an idea of what to expect when you when you do make it back um another another good thing to to do there yep um shout out to our friend king nar this is a funny story he was <laughs> uh doing some normal vanish ran uh to to get a certain weapon and um he was so we were on discord together and he was making his way through vanish ran took him like an hour to get through it he finally killed the the final boss, got his weapon, and noticed that it was the perfected version of the weapon. <laughs> Turns out he was doing it on veteran the entire time, <laughs> and it was funny because he he kept saying like, "Man, I don't think I'm even going to try this on veteran. That's going to be tough, you know." <laughs> first time through, did it on veteran, no problem. Very first time, did it on veteran. I uh, didn't even realize it. Who doesn't learn uh, how to do the Vatishram fights on veteran? Your first time through. <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny i don't i think uh, considering that i don't think he died all that many times that's um, impressive that's impressive feat right there mm -hmm. uh another shout out to mother dragons for hooking me up with those uh witches festival crafting roots i got the witch's hat thank you so much it's pretty cool been wanting that for a few years now uh, and again shout out to the chat grizzly con gummy bear thank you guys for being here always a pleasure always appreciate it any other shout outs Davius? I think you. I think you got the shout outs. I think you covered it. We also shouted out our PvP buddies earlier, but uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Uncle Sam, King Nar, Munchie, Maddie, Mother of Dragons again. Uh, thanks, guys, for playing with us. It's been fun. Um, we have a guild. The guild's <laughs> name is Stoons Goons, best named guild on the server, and the official guild of the Scroll and Podcast. If you'd like to be a member, send us an email at scrollandpodcast at gmail.com and we'll send you an invite. Um, that's just on the PCNA server. If your uh, guild roster is full, that's okay. We can invite you to the Discord. Um, and really, that's where the action's happening anyway. That's where most of us are are chatting and talking about builds and and making jokes, memes, and, and, and whatever else. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, anyone who's in the Discord is a fully, fit, fully fledged goon. Uh, so scroll and podcast at gmail.com and we'll get you in there. Also feel free to just send us an email for, for any reason, uh, scroll and podcast at gmail.com. You can just, uh, you know, ask us a question, make a suggestion for the show. Um, say hello, tell us a joke. Uh, just say hi, mom, whatever. Uh, <laughs> scroll and podcast at gmail.com. What else we got, Davies? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll catch you next time.